52-story treehouse. Chapter 12, A Crazy Plan. Happy birthday, Andy, says Jill. Thanks, Jill, I say. But can this be Terry's party too? Because today is his birthday as well. I didn't know it was your birthday, Terry, says Jill. Andy's been dropping hints for months, but you never said a word. That's because my parents told, never told me when my birthday was, says Terry. So I didn't know, but Andy said I could share his. That's so nice of you, Andy, says Jill. Happy birthday, Terry. I'll just get Mr. Hee Haw to add your name to the birthday banner. Jill, I say, this is amazing, but how did you organize it all so quickly? I mean, we only got back from the vegetable app castle a couple of hours ago. The animals and I have been planning your surprise party for weeks, says Jill. It was while we were getting ready that I pricked my finger on that cursed carrot. But luckily, when I woke up, the animals did too, and they finished getting the party ready while I was away. They really love a party, as you can see. Look, says Terry, a butterfly, and it says happy birthday on its wings. That's because it's a birthday butterfly, says Jill. Why is it wearing the caterpillar's hat, says Terry. Because it used to be the caterpillar, says Jill. Huh, says Terry. How could a caterpillar turn into a butterfly? Metamorphosis, says Jill. What's that, says Terry. I'll explain later, I say. Birthdays are really fun, says Terry. His face covered in Edward Scooperhand's birthday cake flavored ice cream cake. I think we should have one every day. But that's not how birthdays work, I say. You only get one per year because otherwise you would get old too fast. Hey, I know, says Terry. Why don't we make a birthday level in our tree house where it can be your birthday whenever you want, but you don't get any older? I think you might be onto something, I say. Ring, 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 ring. Hmm, that's weird, says Terry. It sounds like our 3D video phone, but it can't be, because what would it be doing down here in the forest? Actually, it is your 3D video phone, says Jill. I had Larry, Curly, and Mo bring it down here in case Mr. Big Nose ran to wish you a happy birthday. That's probably him now. You'd better answer it. Hello, Andy and Terry, says Mr. Big Nose. I guess you know why I'm calling. To wish us a happy birthday, I say. Don't be ridiculous, says Mr. Big Nose. I'm calling to tell you your book is due at five o'clock. Five o'clock tomorrow, says Terry. No, five o'clock today, says Mr. Big Nose. But we're not finished, I say. We've been too busy rescuing you. That's not my problem, says Mr. Big Nose. A contract is a contract. That book had better be here by five. Or else, he hangs up. I look at Terry. Terry looks at me. I think it's time for presents, says Jill, handing us a parcel wrapped in gold paper with a big purple bow. But how can we open presents at a time like this, I say. If we don't get our book written, then, then, then I don't know what will happen, but it will probably involve Mr. Big Nose getting so mad that his nose explodes and us having to go back to work at the monkey house. Don't worry, says Jill. Just trust me. Open your present. I think you'll like it. We unwrap the parcel. It's a book, I say. I love books, says Terry. What's it called? The 52-story treehouse. I love that book, says Terry. No, you don't, I say. I mean, you can't because we haven't written it yet. No, says Jill. You haven't, but I have. All the words and the pictures. But how, I say. With the help of my animals, of course says Jill. You might not think to look at them, but they're really ta quite talented. And it was the least I could do after you and Terry went to so much trouble to rescue me from my enchanted sleep. Can we read it now? says Terry. Of course, says Jill. We read the book.
Well, says Jill, what do you think? Action-packed, I say. I love it, but how will we get it to Mr. Big Nose on time? What about the birthday butterfly, says Terry? No, says Jill, the book would be too heavy for it to carry. Butterflies are beautiful, but they are not very strong. What about Silky and the other flying cats, I say? Could they take it? I'm afraid not, says Jill. They're on holiday in Catenary Islands. I got this postcard from them yesterday. Dear Jill, having a nice time. So far, we've been fishing, bird watching, bird catching, bird eating, and parasailing. Lots of love, Silky and the gang. I know, says Terry. We can use the cannon. No, you can't, says Jill. A robin built her nest in it, and the baby birds have just hatched. They must not be disturbed. Then I guess we're doomed, says Terry. Unless... Jill and I lean forward. Unless what? I say. Unless we get my ninja snails to deliver it. But that will take forever, I say. Not forever, says Terry. Only about a hundred years and fifteen minutes, by my calculations. Great, I say, except that it will be a hundred years too late for Mr. Big Nose. No, it won't, says Terry. Not if we could stop time. Well, duh, I say, as if we could do that. I think we could, says Terry. I've still got the carrot that Jill pricked her finger on. I collected it as evidence when we were first trying to solve the mystery of why Jill has a curse on her. But how is a cursed carrot going to help us stop time? I say. Like this, says Terry. We use the rocket-powered carrot launcher to fire the carrot into the heart of the Greenwich Observatory, which is where all the time in the world comes from. If you stop time there, you stop time everywhere, which will give the ninja snails all the time that they need. Terry's crazy plan to put time and the whole world to sleep for a hundred years so the ninja snails can deliver the book to Mr. Big Nose by five o'clock. But what about the snails, I say? Won't it put them to sleep too? No, says Terry, because they're ninja snails. The normal laws of time and space don't apply to them. That's crazy, Terry, I say. Oh, he sighs in disappointment. So crazy, it just might work. Great, says Terry, to the treehouse. Jill and I follow Terry to the treehouse and climb up to the Ninja Snail Training Academy. Terry explains the mission to the snails, gives them the book, and fires a starting pistol. He waves goodbye to the snails. Good luck, he says. Don't forget to send me a telegram when you arrive. He turns to us. Now let's go launch that carrot. Terry loads the carrot into the carrot launcher and points it in the direction of the Greenwich Observatory. Here goes, he says, pushing the launch button. The carrot shoots into the sky and disappears into the clouds. Well, says Terry, the carrot is on its way. We'd better go home to the room full of pillows and get comfortable. We've got a long sleep ahead of us. Do you really think Terry's plan will work? says Jill as she snuggles into a pile of pillows. I hope so, I say. Are you feeling tired yet? Jill yawns. Maybe a little bit, she says. Yeah, I say, yawning. Me too. What about you, Terry? He doesn't answer. Terry, I say. I look over. Terry is snoring. He's asleep, I say to Jill. But Jill doesn't hear me. She's asleep too. Which just leaves me. I'm the only one who's not asleep. Chapter 13, the last chapter, the Ballad of the Ninja Snails. It was a group of ninja snails, all schooled in ancient art, that set out one day on an epic trip, prepared to play their part. Their precious cargo, a silly book, they had to deliver on time to Mr. Big Nose, the publisher, before five o'clock did chime. Over hill and dale, the snails did slide. Though they grew pale and wan, they were weak and tired and in need of rest, but still the snails slid on. 
Would they make it? Could they take it? The conclusion was not foregone. The odds were against them. Fate seemed to hate them, but still the snail slid on. As the years did pass, the landscape changed that the snails were sliming upon. Seeds became trees and forests grew, but still the snails slid on. The ice did melt and the seas did rise. The low-lying land was all gone, but the climate warmed, a new world formed, but the, still the snails slid on. They were desperate to arrive at the office by five, but time marched never on. They wished to end their epic quest, but still the snail slid on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Till finally they saw a sign, a nose so big and red, their journey's end was reached at last, and up the walls they sped. They reached the open office window and slowly slid inside. They slimed onto the desk office, and across it did they glide. So let hear it. So let's hear it for those snails so brave. Let's give them three big cheers, for they made their way and saved the day, though it took a hundred years and fifteen minutes. Um, hang on. What are these Z's doing all over the page? Oh, I must have fallen asleep. I wonder what the time is. I look at the clock. Hang on, that can't be right. It's fast. A hundred years and fifteen minutes fast. Ah, I remember now. The carrot, the ninja snails, the book. Terry's crazy plan. Terry, I say. Jill, wake up. Terry sits up and rubs his eyes. Jill yawns and stretches. I feel like I've been asleep for a hundred years and fifteen minutes, she says. That's because you have, I say. We all have. I wonder if the snails made it, says Terry. At that moment, the doorbell rings. We go down and open the door. It's Bill the postman. Gee, you guys have really let this place go, says Bill. I had to clear a path to get in here. I'm a postman, not a gardener, you know. Sorry, Bill, I say. We slept in. For a hundred years and fifteen minutes, says Terry. You boys need an alarm clock, says Bill, chuckling. I hate alarms, says Terry. They scare me. How do you feel about telegrams, says Bill. I love them, says Terry. Well, that's great, says Bill, because I've got one for you right here. Yay, says Terry. Taking the telegram from Bill, it's from the snails. What does it say? Says Jill. They made it. Telegram. Receiver Terry. Sender Ninja Snails. Greeting Master Terry. Book delivered. On our way back. See you in a hundred years and fifteen minutes. Love from the Ninja Snails. That's wonderful news. Says Jill. Yeah. Says Terry. I knew they could do it. Me too. I say. I'm going to miss those little guys. Not for long, says Terry. They're on their way home. Always glad to be the bearer of good news, says Bill. But I'd better be on my way. He rides his scooter back down the path he's cleared to our front door, and disappears into the overgrown forest. I had the most amazing dream while we were asleep, says Terry. I dreamed we added another thirteen stories to our treehouse, including one where it's always your birthday. Me too, I say. I had the exact same dream. So did I, says Jill. And one of the news stories was a pet grooming salon, and I was in charge of it. It's kind of weird that we all had the same dream, says Terry. Do you think it means something? Definitely, I say. It means we should add another thirteen stories to the treehouse, and we should get started right away. Don't forget the pet grooming salon, says Jill, or the birthday room, says Terry. One sixty-five story treehouse with a pet grooming salon and a birthday room coming right up. I say, the end.